it is almost time to work on a final project in this series. Before we get started on the project though, there are a couple of things that I want to cover to make sure that you are prepared. In this lesson, we're going to learn the basics of SlimPHP framework and you might be wondering why I decided to go with the SlimPHP and not something like Laravel or Symfony or even a custom PHP framework. There are a few reasons and to better understand why, I first need to tell you what exactly the SlimPHP framework is and how it works. So let's head over to the Slim Framework website and right at the front we see the wording that SlimPHP is a micro framework. And right under it we see a snippet of code that looks somewhat similar to what we've been building and working on throughout the series. We got some kind of app object right here, then we're registering the routes and we're running the app. Let's click on the user guide here to open the documentation and go through some of the features that are offered by SlimPHP. Now pay attention to this wording right here. At its core, SlimPHP is a dispatcher that receives an HTTP request, invokes an appropriate callback routine, and returns an HTTP response. So this means that Slim is not a typical batteries included framework like Laravel or Symfony. It's a micro framework that has abilities to route requests and send back responses. You can of course add on and install more components, but it's a great minimal starting point. Once you read through the how does it work section, you will realize that it's very similar to the way our current codebase works. There is a front controller like index.php where all requests go through and where everything is bootstrapped. So these are some of the main reasons why I decided to choose Slim. It's a micro framework and it looks similar to the code that we've been building and playing around throughout the series. It has more features and is a well-tested and maintained framework while being very slim and flexible enough to add on more components as needed. That is why I decided not to use custom built framework because I prefer to use tools that have a community around it and can google questions and get help when I need. It also is not a kitchen sink framework that comes with a lot of features that you may not need for your application. It was designed to work well with other PHP components, so you can only use the things that you need for your app and then add on more things as the needs arise. Slim PHP also lines up really well with the topics that we've covered in this series, so it should feel right at home when working with it, which is why I decided not to use something like Laravel or Symfony, because then I would need to spend a lot more time teaching the entire framework and its features. This way we can add on only the components that we really need for the project like Doctrine, Twig, maybe a couple of Symfony components and so on. The good thing is that we've covered pretty much all of those already in this series. So let's click on the application lifecycle and read through some of it to better understand what exactly happens when the request comes in using the Slim framework. So first the app class is instantiated. Then the routes are defined using one of these methods. And finally, run method is called on the app object. Now this third step has its own sub process or sub steps. The run method goes through the middleware stack and middleware is basically a set of actions or pieces of code that can be executed before and after the Slim application. There is a nice diagram that explains this process really well within the middleware page. So if we go to the middleware right here and scroll down a little bit, we see this diagram. As you can see, the application is in the center of the diagram and it starts by executing the middlewares from the outside to inside. So whatever middleware was added or registered last will be the first to execute. It then executes the next middleware and so on until it reaches the app. Then it traverses the middleware stack backwards from the inside out. Slim supports PSR7 interfaces for its request and response objects and even provides its own implementation. That being said though, you're free to use any third-party PSR7 compatible implementation if you wanted to. We're just going to use the one that's provided by the Slim framework in this video. Alright, enough with the theory, let's actually get Slim PHP working. You can read through the documentation for the request, response and routing on your own. Today's video is brought to you by Cloudways. Cloudways is a managed hosting provider that takes away all the hassles of server management by emphasizing performance and simplicity. This allows you to focus on more important tasks to grow your business. 
So whether you're an agency with several clients or a freelance developer, Cloudways is a great option for your hosting needs. Cloudways can host almost every PHP application on several different cloud infrastructures like AWS, DigitalOcean, and so on. So sign up today using the link provided in the description of this video and use my promo code GIO15 to get a $15 hosting credit. Let's go to the installation page and follow the steps to get SlimPHP installed in our application. So first we need to compose a require SlimPHP. So we'll copy this and open the terminal and paste it here. Let's head back to the documentation and then we need to install a PSR7 implementation. As I mentioned before, we can use any PSR7 compatible implementation or we could use the one provided by SlimPHP. So we'll stick to the first party PSR7 implementation and copy this composer command and install it in our terminal. And finally, if we head back to the installation documentation, we need to copy this snippet of code for the hello world application and paste it in our public index.php. So let's copy this, head over to our code, and I'm just going to comment this section out right here and paste it here. Let's import the app factory. The request and response are the interfaces. So if we head back to the documentation, we see that it's response interface and server request interface just alias to response and request. So we're going to import these as well. And this should be good enough. Let's open the browser. And sure enough, it works. As you can see, it was pretty simple to get SlimPHP installed and working. Now let's make it work with our current dependencies like Twig and Doctrine because we're going to need that for the project that we're going to work on. First thing that we need to do is that we need to open the composer.json and I need to remove some dependencies that we don't need. For example, we don't need the PSR container. We don't need the Symfony mailer. We'll keep the doctrine for now. We don't need Laravel's container and we'll keep Twig for now. Let's delete the composer lock and let's run composer install. Also, as a note, if you're following along the series and you use Docker, it's always good to rebuild containers on each lesson because there may have been changes to the Docker file for that specific lesson. That way you can be sure that you're using the same environment as me on the video when following it. For example, in the last lesson when we did the deployment to Cloudways, we used PHP 8.0. And in this lesson, I changed it back to PHP 8.1. All right, so let's get the Twig templates to work. If we go back to the documentation and click on the templates right here, we see the instructions on how to get the Twig to work with SlimPHP. There is a Twig view component offered by the SlimPHP framework, and we need to install that, which basically helps us render and use Twig templates within the application. It's like a wrapper around the Twig environment object and makes it easier to integrate it within the SlimPHP. So we'll open the terminal, paste that in. Then if we continue with the documentation, we see that we need to create a Twig object, and then we need to add a Twig middleware to the application. So let's copy these two and paste it right here. We'll import the twig and we'll import twig middleware. Now we need to adjust the path and the settings. Now if you remember we already set that up in our app class that we custom built it and we're actually going to delete some of these classes later because we will no longer need them. But let's open app class here and as you can see we're instantiating an environment and using file system loader with the views path and using the storage path for the cache and auto reload is set to true. So we're just going to copy this and paste it here and we'll copy the view path and replace this. If we click on the twig create, we see that it pretty much does the same thing. It still uses the file system loader and then instantiates its own object. And if we inspect the constructor, let's search for construct we see that this is where the environment object is being created. It just does some additional things to make it work properly with the Twig framework and makes things much easier. Now, one additional thing that we need to do is that we were adding an extension right here. So we need to add this extension to this Twig object as well. So we'll just paste it right here. And finally, to actually render the Twig template, let's go back to the documentation 
and this is how we can render it so we can get the twig object from the request and then we're going to return view render which accepts the psr7 response interface which we already have right here so we'll pass that in and we'll pass the template which is index.twig and then data if we had any for this part we don't have any data so this should be good enough now let's go back to the browser refresh the page and as you can see it works now we probably don't want to register routes this way because we don't want to specify the callbacks and have all these controller specific logic within our route definition in addition to callbacks slim also supports controllers so instead of doing this what i'm going to do is that i'm going to comment this out and we'll register the route again and we'll just simply pass the controller this way so home controller and the method or action that we want to execute when this route is requested in the browser now we just need to adjust the index method in the controller this is our custom implementation of the router where we were using the attributes which we no longer do so we'll get rid of that and we're also not injecting the twig yet because this is a custom uh, installation of twig environment directly but now we're using slim twig components so we'll get rid of that and the controller methods accept psr7 request and response interface objects so what we can do is that we can copy this right here and put it here let's copy the use statements as well we'll paste it here and then we'll do the same thing that we did here so we'll copy this let's import twig we need to pass the response as the first argument and then template as the second and this should work let's refresh the page and sure enough it still works now let's do the same thing for the invoice controller so we need to duplicate this and we have invoices route which will execute the index method on the invoice controller we go here we'll remove the twig dependency we'll get rid of that let's copy this here and then we'll simply do twig from request render which accepts response template and uh, arguments uh, we can get rid of the type hint here and actually add the response as the type hint and this should be good enough let's open the browser visit invoices page and we get an exception which is expected in this case the error message states that the argument one of the constructor method of the invoice controller must be of type invoice service but null no was given so that simply means that the dependency injection is not working because we don't have the dependency injection container we don't have auto wiring like we did with our custom container implementation or when we were using laravel's container slim php supports psr11 container implementations and we can install and use pretty much any container implementation that is psr11 compatible php di is one such library that implements psr11 and provides great set of features when it comes to dependency injection containers including auto wiring so we're going to set that up and then we'll set up the doctrine ORM and migrations along with it to get this invoice controller to work because as you might remember the invoice service needs the doctrine ORM to work properly we're going to do that in the next lesson though because I don't want to overwhelm you with a lot of information in this one so take a break and play around with the slim php framework for the time being you can also read through the slim php documentation and get prepared for the project if you have any questions concerns or just feedback please feel free to comment below so thank you so much for watching please hit the like button if you enjoy my content and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so in the next video we're going to add the doctrine ORM, migrations and PHP DI components to our slim PHP app.